How to Lower Bad Cholesterol Naturally, A Complete Guide Welcome to today's video on how to fix bad cholesterol. For decades, cholesterol has been misrepresented, used as a political football and in marketing, leading many people to believe that high levels of cholesterol is simply bad, or that LDL is bad. But that's not the full story. In fact, cholesterol is an amazing molecule. It's vital to hormone function, healthy nerves, vitamin D synthesis, and strong bones. But it can become damaged, which causes mayhem in the body. Like cell damage, heart disease, chronic inflammation, and kidney failure. It's useful to think of cholesterol like a superhero that can sometimes go rogue. Due to a number of reasons, including toxic foods, often foods that we're told are healthy, and other modern lifestyle factors. So today, we're going to explore this amazing molecule and show you a natural and practical plan to keep cholesterol in check, to potentially reduce or avoid reliance on medication, and get your cholesterol working optimally. But before we dive in, can you do us a favor? Click on the thumbs up and help us spread the word about heart disease prevention. And ring the bell to stay up to date with our latest videos. We want to make sure you get the latest info so you can live a long, healthy life. So what is cholesterol and how does it become damaged? Cholesterol is a waxy substance. Think of it as something similar in consistency. To candle wax, but on a microscopic level. It's white and fatty, and it's a key. Building block of our cells. It's in our eyes, hands, legs. And everywhere cells exist. Making them both rigid enough. To maintain their shape. And flexible enough to allow movement and function. Now, don't worry, we won't go too technical. But it's important to understand this next point. Because it's vital for literally everything you do. Now, when we talk about cholesterol, we often discuss LDL, or low density, lipoprotein, often described as bad cholesterol, and HDL or high density lipoprotein, often referred to as good cholesterol, as well as VLDL and IDL. But these lipoproteins aren't actually cholesterol. They are proteins that carry cholesterol around the body. They're like a delivery van, delivering the goods where they need to go. Imagine your body as a bustling city with a complex transportation network. Cholesterol is like a valuable package that needs to be transported to various destinations within the city, where it's used to produce bile acids that digest the food you eat. Works to strengthen bones by converting sunlight into vitamin D and synthesizes hormones like estrogen, testosterone, and cortisol, which then coordinate thousands of processes every day. LDL, the so-called bad lipoprotein, acts as the fleet of delivery trucks, transporting cholesterol from the liver, where it's produced, to different cells throughout the body, where cholesterol is used to build and maintain structures, so they can perform their functions effectively. That's LDL, the one they call bad. On the other hand, HDL, known as good cholesterol, operates like a fleet of recycling trucks. After the cholesterol has been utilized by the cells, HDL picks up any excess cholesterol that is no longer needed. It acts as a cleanup crew, collecting the cholesterol packages and returning them to the liver for processing and elimination. Imagine you wanted to build a brick wall. You might order 100 bricks but you only end up using 80 of those bricks. HDL carries the unused bricks back to the depot, your liver, as well as other cleanup tasks. So, LDL and HDL are both vital. They're the transportation fleets that ensure cholesterol is delivered to the right destinations and excess cholesterol is properly recycled. That's a simplified version, but it's important to recognize that both HDL and LDL are vital. That cholesterol is a friend, not a foe, as long as it's working well. It's a complex, finely tuned process that helps our bodies repair and regenerate. But when cholesterol becomes oxidized or damaged, well, that's when things turn bad. Imagine you've left an apple out on the kitchen counter and you notice it turning brown. That's oxidation, a natural process that happens in our bodies too. When your apple gets oxidized, it becomes less appealing less nutritious, less useful. 
Oxidation damages cholesterol in much the same way, making it less able to do its job properly. And even worse, disrupting cell function, damaging artery walls, causing plaque buildups on the artery walls, and increasing the risk of heart attack and stroke. This oxidation can be triggered by a number of things. Refined sugar being one of the worst offenders. Too much sugar skyrockets blood glucose. It's the basis of type 2 diabetes. But those blood glucose molecules can also attach to the LDL particles, in a process called glycation. Glycated LDL particles are more prone to oxidation, meaning we have these sticky, glycated, oxidized LDL particles floating around, which can stick to artery walls and accumulate there, causing inflammation and damage in the artery wall, and the disease known as atherosclerosis. Okay, so that's a very brief overview of oxidation, caused by high blood sugar and a number of other factors. Now, before we explore how to deal with this, there's one final concept that we need to quickly cover. LDL, which delivers cholesterol, can be large and buoyant or small and dense. Large and buoyant LDL are like big balloons, or a person who's been lifting weights and going to yoga classes. They are big and resilient, floating around your bloodstream with an almost zen-like calm, resistant to oxidative damage. Small and dense particles, on the other hand, are like fragile little bullets shooting around your blood vessels. They are more prone to oxidation, and because they're smaller, they can more easily penetrate artery walls and cause damage. It's like having a small, rowdy crowd in a peaceful town, they can cause trouble everywhere they go, disrupting the normal harmony and balance of the body. So, how do we make our LDL big, strong, healthy and resilient? We'll get to that in a second. But for now, just remember. Big balloon good. Small bullets bad. The important thing is that it's not the presence of LDL that's the problem, as is commonly portrayed by pharmaceutical companies and marketers. Now we've cleared up the fact that small and damaged LDL is the true culprit here. How to fix it? Let's cover four natural steps to keep you on the right track, starting with Number 4. Exercise regularly. While it's not the single most important factor when it comes to cholesterol, health, exercise does play a role. Regular physical activity encourages the production of high-density lipoproteins, or HDL, taking excess cholesterol back to the liver. This is particularly important because, as we discussed, oxidized cholesterol floating around the body leads to inflammation, artery damage, and heart disease. Remember the HDL recycling truck metaphor, taking cholesterol back to the liver. Well, exercise is like hiring more drivers. You can have a truck every 10 minutes instead of every hour. If you don't have excess LDL floating around, there's less opportunity for it to get damaged and cause problems. What's more, exercise promotes large and buoyant lipoproteins, which are more resilient, less vulnerable to oxidation, and less likely to break through artery walls. It's a true double whammy for improving cholesterol health, and therefore improving full body function. Number 3. Stay away from polyunsaturated oils. Polyunsaturated oils like canola, corn, and soybean oils, are some of the main offenders. When it comes to cholesterol oxidation, others include Asterisk sunflower oil, asterisk safflower, asterisk cottonseed, asterisk soybean, asterisk sesame, asterisk grapeseed, asterisk peanut, asterisk and walnut oil. Polyunsaturated fats can be very healthy in their whole form, like a whole walnut or pumpkin seed. However, when the oils are extracted, they become highly vulnerable to oxidation. This is due to their chemical structure which makes the oil oxidize or go rancid when exposed to heat, light, and oxygen. Oxidation turns these healthy fats into harmful substances. In fact, experts believe that polyunsaturated oils are potentially the number one most dangerous food when it comes to not only heart disease risk, but all health. This sensitivity to heat, light, and oxygen essentially means there's a high chance that polyunsaturated oils are already rancid by the time they get off the supermarket shelf. 
not to mention cooking with them. Superior cooking options include coconut oil and ghee, saturated fats that are highly stable and resistant to oxidation. Furthermore, we have olive oil, which is predominantly composed of monounsaturated fats, yet another structure. Monounsaturated fats are much more stable than polyunsaturated, but less stable than saturated fats. That means olive oil has a lower smoke point than coconut oil and ghee. However, studies have shown that it's generally safe to cook with at moderate temperatures, like oven baking. But where olive oil really shines is cold. Applications like dressings for salads or drizzling over finished dishes. It's brimming with beneficial compounds like oleic acid, oloropean, vitamin E, squalene, and phytosterols, which promote healthy cholesterol through multiple mechanisms. Now, the method of cooking also matters. Deep frying involves high temperatures and a large amount of oil, leading to the formation of particularly harmful compounds such as advanced glycation end products and acrylamide, which skyrockets cholesterol oxidation. So, stay away from polyunsaturated cooking oils. Instead choose highly stable coconut oil, ghee, or extra virgin olive oil, and stay away from deep fried foods. Which ties in with Number 2. Limit or avoid toxic foods. We already discussed refined sugar. It wreaks havoc on cholesterol, causing oxidation, inflammation, and glycation. It damages the liver, which in turn leads to small, dense, and dangerous lipoproteins. Not to mention the fact that high blood sugar damages cholesterol and kicks off the whole cycle of diabetes and artery damage. So avoid refined sugar, soda, candy, etc. As well as alternatives like high fructose corn syrup. Similarly, stay away from refined carbohydrates like standard bread, pasta and rice, which are going to act very similar to sugar once they hit your stomach. Processed foods like supermarket sauces, shelf-stable cookies, frozen dinners, and processed meats all trigger oxidation too. These aren't real food. They contain added chemicals and preservatives. And your body is going to respond accordingly. With inflammation, oxidation, and dysfunction. Now, that might all sound very gloomy. But watch our other videos and you'll get a ton of ideas to make this work. To increase your energy, get your body working optimally, and discover food that actually tastes better. This brings us to our number one. Number one. Consume antioxidant-rich whole foods. We have oxidation, and we have antioxidants. See the connection? Antioxidants are nature's defense mechanism against the harmful process of oxidation. Antioxidants are like tiny warriors, neutralizing free radicals, the unstable molecules that attack LDL. So include plenty of antioxidant-rich foods in your diet. Fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and spices are packed with antioxidants, each containing a unique antioxidant profile, like anthocyanins in berries, beta-carotene antioxidant in carrots, sweet potato, and apricots, or quercetin in onions, apples, and kale. Likewise, healthy fats are essential. They aid in nutrient absorption and promote large, buoyant, healthy LDL particles. Avocados are an outstanding example. They're rich in heart-healthy monounsaturated fats, including the ultra-beneficial oleic acid, the same fatty acid that gives extra virgin olive oil, much of its protective properties. Other excellent foods include asterisk nuts and seeds asterisk wild-caught fatty fish asterisk quality grass-fed meat asterisk and pasture-raised eggs. To that point, eggs were a major victim of the categorical demonization of cholesterol. But many studies now show that as long as you're eating quality eggs, heart disease risk doesn't increase. And in fact, eggs can be one of the most nutritious foods available, particularly for promoting healthy cholesterol profiles. Not only do they contain all nine essential amino acids, making them a complete protein source, but they are also loaded with vitamins A, B, D, E, and K, along with iron, phosphorus, selenium, and other minerals. And we couldn't discuss eggs without talking about omega-3, the heart-healthy, 
Atherosclerosis fighting super fatty acid. Well, pasture-raised eggs contain higher levels of omega-3, along with other nutrients like vitamin D, due to the hen's more natural diet and lifestyle, making them an excellent option for anyone interested in better nutrition. So, as a simple rule, go for whole foods that are close to their natural state, that haven't been altered or processed, and don't contain artificial additives. Focusing on these foods will ensure you're getting plenty of antioxidants, fiber, and healthy fats, which all protect cholesterol from becoming oxidized, while also promoting broader health. So there you have it. We hope this video cleared. A few things up when it comes to cholesterol. That LDL isn't necessarily bad, but small, dense, and oxidized LDL is what we really want to avoid. To achieve this, focus on regular exercise. Avoid polyunsaturated oils, and go for more stable choices like coconut oil, ghee, and extra virgin olive oil. Limit or avoid toxic foods, especially refined sugar, refined carbohydrates, processed foods and processed meats. And finally, consume antioxidant-rich whole foods, like fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, spices, grass-fed meat, fatty fish, and eggs. We hope you found this video useful. Let us know what you think, if you have any questions or tips to share with others watching. Leave a comment.